a larger amount to show up that day. Uh, the targeted approach is starting from within first, starting with your athletes. Who do they know? Who do you know? Friends, families, you know, people are really involved in their church, or you know, looking at what kind of folks do you want to get involved, and then going to those sources where they, where they might be. We found that our best source of uh, new partners is our old partners, that they're the ones that start recruiting and talking. And then well, when we've been inviting um, our teams in scrimmage, those are the ones that are um, becoming our new way. So where do you start, like we said? Your athletes and their acquaintances, who do they know? School-based programs in Maryland, too, for local both coaches in the schools or teachers identifying you know, certain clubs, they can help you pinpoint maybe a, gender, a part of the student body that you know, is looking to get involved in a certain sport uh, using those people. Community-based programs, if there's rec leagues in your town that there's already a pool of folks playing volleyball, well maybe they want to play this volleyball too. So those are some different, different places to go as well. So when you're selecting your team members, again, regardless of if they're the partner or the athlete, just looking at the age grouping. Um, obviously, when it's a younger, younger crowd, it's more appropriate to have closer in age individuals together versus if you're older, um, you know, in your life. Life experiences, you can kind of expand that, that window there. Readiness, again, are they maybe more suited for bocce? Like maybe you invite bocce, or are they ready for the team, the team play um, for these select sports too that we're, we're offering at this at this time. So these are some rules for for your partners. And obviously you would hold your athletes to this as well, but if you're getting some new partners to help with or their orientation process that, again, they'll be at all your practices, they'll know the sport, know the rules, doing their best, uh, that they, they aren't there to be a coach. So that would be a different, that's more what they want to get involved in, um, that they're not expected to be the coach because you will have the coach. And the big thing there too is traveling and staying with the team. Uh, that, that That is understood, that they're not going to drive their own car to competition and meet you guys, and then you know, we hope that you're staying with your team, you're cheering on at the event, you guys are sitting together, doing, doing all those, those, those team things, and back, certainly back to sportsmanship, of course, as well. Do you have any, I guess, I know you have a program, for those of you, do you do orientation with your partners beforehand? I guess there's different ways you can play that. You can bring them in, you know, before the season starts, once they, you know, they're into it, or is that something you do with your teams in general? That's what we're starting to do is have a, um, at least an earlier meeting, if not an early practice, with mm -hmm. just the partners to, um, to talk about the philosophy, our philosophy, and um, you know, expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we have actually talked around doing um, an early assessment night for just the partners for going involved. Uh, they won't do that yet this year, but um, just to, to get a sense, a better sense of where they fall, and again, to remind them of our class. Sportsmanship, I can't count as hard as enough. I know there's a little bit of repetition with that, but again, it applies to everyone, everyone that's involved with your program. And like Mamie said too, with those meetings, you know, we and our policy procedures have different code of conduct for athletes, for coaches, for spectators. So if you want to put something together and put a contract or something together before the season that you talk through with them, and then you know they sign off on that, those are all tools that you can use as well, just to, to reinforce those ideas. We were I, I got a chance to work with a softball team that went to the MIT. Unified softball team, and we took the um, code of conduct and made everyone, we went over it and made everyone sign it, including partners, that they understood their roles. Because they were representing Illinois out of the state, and uh, <laughs> part of my getting to go along with them was for them to understand they could pull the plug at any moment, and it looked like they were embarrassed. 
So for them to hear that in advance, always a lot easier. It's always a lot easier to say we knew this because we talked about it rather than to say, oh, I meant for you to read this. Um, it's nice to just put it up there and we said, I, I actually added the line and made them sign it as a contract. And the eight weeks is the golden magical number. It's like good for hearing eight weeks in your sleep because we've heard it so much this past weekend. But that's definitely ideally, at least before the set competition, that we hope you end up getting out with your athletes in training. And it's both the athletes and the partners coming together for your training sessions. Um, and that everyone is together. That starts the season. Hopefully, everyone is in it for the long haul and can finish the season, the season together as well. The next song talks about local competition where it just shares a variety of different options that some states have the luxury of having in some parts of some states. We are to that point really in, in the central here, uh, but unified sports leagues, local unified sports tournament, community leagues. Um, that would be if your your team is at a level where you want to join a rugby league, you know, that's not affiliated with special Olympics in Illinois, but, but you would be able to do that, of course, as well. I know of a, a softball team in Pekin that actually plays in the community. They play in the church league, and uh, it's, I've wanted to watch them. <laughs> it's a pretty cutthroat church league, so it's changed my 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 <laughs> mindset on what church league means. Uh, you know, they're, 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 yeah, they're not friendly. Um, <laughs> but um, but this team actually plays in in that church league, and they're competitive. And There's no, you know, giving them any breaks or giving them, you know, extra consideration. It's, it's just regular league. When we're talking program competition, it's mostly on our end, especially in Illinois, where we can fit the different growth in unified sport in. So we look at our existing events and competition. Can we handle more teams at the facility? You know, some budgetary things as well. Um, if we would grow to the point of having a unified sports event solely, which we're not to that point yet. Uh, someday, um, we're hoping the fall to have some unified soccer uh, tournaments. So that's coming up the road too. And then just looking at existing community events too and competitions that there are just across the board of where, where the best Sometimes you can just do that. You can ask if there's a local tournament that's going on. You can ask if they would like, you know, make a, um, a division or allow your team to play as a part with the understanding that it knows, you know, that you're coming in. Um, our, uh, we have a program that's called Seek to Soar that's a total rip off. It's a couch 5K program. And like, so it's a uh, walking, running club with mentors. And we've gone in the community runs, and you know they've been very supportive of them. Like we, we did turkey trot, you know, Thanksgiving, they joined the Lake Bloomington Lake Run um, Club Run. And so um, you can ask and see if they'll make a special division for you if you think you need it, or you know just uh, embrace your involvement in it. Dallas develop a couple of teams that would be willing to play your team with the understanding of uh, the unified concept. <laughs>